cataractcoach.com what's happening in these flow max eyes why is the pupil ovoid well let me show you that's actually a trick we use to have the iris help us by holding the cataract so we're starting off our capsorexis we'll do this brown eye first and notice that we're making the capsorexis larger than the pupil so the edge of the rexis is actually under the iris we don't need to see it directly you know where it is You've done this a thousand times, in fact, 10,000 times. So just very carefully, even though the pupil's four millimeters, let's make a five millimeter or five and a half millimeter capsule rexus, just like that. Here's how we get the nucleus out of the bag. The key is to be slow and steady. Do not be forceful or fast. A little bit of fluid. Once you get the fluid wave, keep injecting, and there the nucleus comes out of the bag. And now using the cannula, just dig into the nucleus and tilt it up exactly like that. Now you have the pupil and the iris holding the nucleus, and it can be emulsified quite easily. At the end of the case, we'll put the eye on the capsule bag. So important here to aim downward to make sure we go under where we know the nasal rexus should be. And then for the Rest of the land, the trailing haptic, use our chopper here and make sure it goes sufficiently deep in the capsule bag. Now with the pupil this small, you can't really see. So now while the eye is full of viscoelastic, as the lens unfolds, use that chopper and we can actually lift up the iris like that and see there's the optic edge under the rexus, do it in this quadrant. Again, that looks good and there's no cortex. You can do it all around, that looks good too. There's the haptic optic junction. You can check sub-incisionally, check to this side, and you'll get a nice view all around. And we are sure that the lens is completely in the capsule bag and there is no retained lens material. So now just take out the viscoelastic with the IA probe. We can go under the lens as well. And remove the viscoelastic and complete the case here. You can also use the chopper again during this phase if you think the lens has moved, just to lift the iris to make sure. Let's look at a different eye. Here's a blue eye, a little bit larger on the pupil size initially. And again, we'll make the capsule rexus right under, or just outside the pupil, right under the iris. So again, this is a four and a half millimeter pupil, and we'll make a five to five and a half millimeter capsule rexus. So we don't see the actual edge of the rexus. It's just barely hidden under that iris. And this is important. Do not make a small or tiny rexus. With a tiny rexus, you're not going to be able to get the nucleus out of the capsular bag. You must have at least a 5 millimeter rexus. So slow and steady, here we go. Again, the same technique. You wait to see a fluid wave, there it is. And again, another fluid wave, and slowly it comes out of the bag. Again, the key is, when you get the hydrodissection going, don't stop. After you see the first or second fluid wave, keep going slow and steady. No force needed. Here it is, the end of the case. The pupil looks a little larger here because there's viscoelastic in the eye. As soon as you take the viscoelastic out, the pupil come back down to a smaller size. So there we go, advancing the lens. This is a lot easier to see compared to the brown eye that we showed you earlier in this video. And let's make sure everything goes in the caps or bag. And you can see as we lose viscoelastic already, the pupil's coming down. Let's check, that looks clean, that's clean. We can check in all meridians. We see nothing there. And even check over there, looks great. Again, take the IA probe, go underneath the lens, remove the viscoelastic, and we'll finish up the case. So important technique here. So these patients obviously don't have ovoid pupil to begin with. They get that way when we use the trick of having the pupil hold the nucleus.